If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. I want to begin today with a reminder that narcissists obviously have a vested interest in trying to be in control over you. They're very selfish. They're very entitled. They have a penchant towards manipulation. But all of that is built upon a fear-based insecurity. Deep down, they don't have a whole lot of inner strength to draw upon, so they draw their strength from what they consider to be a comparative standing to you if they can somehow show themselves to be superior and they show that you're inferior, then somehow that makes them feel like they are, you know, they're winning or they're on top of their game. And so they're constantly looking for proof in you that illustrates that you indeed are inadequate. Now, one of the uh, the things that we uh, that we know that uh, by observing narcissists is that one of their favorite games is to poke at you and set up scenarios where you indeed will give them an ugly response, and then they turn right around and say, "See, there's my uh, not the proof that I need." You are a defective person, and they go into the character assassination. Now, the biggest lie that narcissists want you to buy into is simply this. They, they would say, if they were honest, when you respond poorly to me, it proves that you're a bad person. And I wonder how many times you've been on the receiving end of messages such as that. I mean, for example, let's suppose that they get you pulled into an argument and it's the same argument you've had at other times. And in the end, it's like, how in the world am I supposed to engage with someone like you who are, you're so argumentative and you're so difficult to get along with? And it's like, see, you respond poorly to me and it, it just illustrates you're a bad person. Or let's suppose that they've been so difficult that there's a situation where you just make a decision and you don't consult them, you don't talk with them about why you make the decision and they find out about it later on. What they'll say at that point is, you know, you're a keeper of secrets, aren't you? And you're somebody that's uh, that's constantly skulking around behind the scenes, but I caught you. You're just nothing but a liar. And then they go back to the big lie. When you respond poorly to me, that just illustrates that you're a bad person. And they take uh, much delight in proving, if you will, that you are a low character person and they have no um, bashfulness about reminding you of that. See, along with the tactics of them trying to find proof that you are indeed a bad person, you'll notice that they're quite willing to accuse you of all sorts of other terrible traits. They're just looking for any kind of evidence that says, ah, you're defective. Criticism is something that comes from that narcissist toward you. There's no sense of fairness. There's no sense of objectivity. Uh, they may be quite willing to tell other people about how bad you are. Now, when they're irresponsible, Rather than saying, yeah, I was irresponsible, they deny it and somehow it becomes yours or someone else's problem. Uh, if you differ from them, which is probably going to be fairly often, rather than discussing matters with you, all they do is they look to someone to ascribe shame to, and that's you. And so again, they just keep coming back saying, you, you prove over and over how you're just a bad person. They're highly defensive when you say, well, but there are these things that you have that need to be improved. Uh, and so they use a lot of deflection. It's like, no, you got that wrong. That's not what you thought, uh, what you think it is. And so they go into a justification and rationalization mode as they deflect any kind of negative attention uh, off of them. And of course, back onto you. If you want to say, Hey, let's talk. It's not going to happen very well. 
And so they, they cite your mistakes over and over, hoping that uh, they can just uh, prove over and over that you are in fact defective. And th they fail to look at the context of what's going on between yourself and them. Uh, they would never say, well, I, I know part of the problem is you find me to be difficult and that's why you have difficult reactions to me. They can't do that. Uh, and so uh, in their mind, uh, they're just constantly looking for reasons to set you up as being the foil. And you know, when you think about it this way, and I'm not making excuses for all of your negative reactions to them, but what person can experience these manipulative and uh, half-honest kinds of uh, ploys from uh, the narcissist and not respond inappropriately from time to time. I mean, as good of a person as you are, you are going to make mistakes. And the narcissist is over there thinking, yeah, I'm kind of counting on that. And so they're just going to uh, jump on that and push that big lie. Every time you respond poorly to me, it illustrates that you are a bad person. Now, I want you to be aware of the fact that there are multiple factors at play when the narcissist takes this kind of tactic toward you. First and foremost, the narcissist is using very strong binary thinking, all or nothing, black or white. They allow for no gray whatsoever. If, you, if you've done one thing that was less than wonderful, everything about you is terrible. You see what I'm saying? And that being the case, we can also say though, that they make major use of the defense mechanism of projection. They will see in you all sorts of characteristics that they themselves have on the inside but will not come to terms with. As long as they can keep the focus over there, that's what the projection is, then uh, they're in the clear as far as they're concerned. It also illustrates, that being the case, that narcissists have a very short memory Sure enough, you may have lost your temper. You may have responded in a less than wonderful way, but the narcissist has a lot of times when they are also uh, not uh, not entirely good. Uh, they have flaws. They make mistakes. They make miscalculations. And, they, and uh, the mindset that the narcissist has is, you're not allowed to talk about that. And I've already uh, forgotten about all of those negatives about myself. It's all about you and your negatives. Um, they have nothing of a collaborative spirit. They have zero appreciation for the concept of our interconnection with one another. It, it just, it's not there. They try to take this moral or ethical high ground, but when you examine their life, you realize that's a joke because they're not on any kind of high moral plane in their life. And basically we can say that um, historically, they never learned how to process shame. They just came to the conclusion that the one who pronounces shame wins. The accuser is the winner. And so that's just all they do. So we go back to their lie that they want you to believe. And that is, you're a bad person when you respond poorly. And I want us to see if we can uh, break that down and ask, is, is that is that accurate? Do you need to buy into that at all? And let's toss out our judgment and let's be descriptive about what's going on inside of you when in fact you do respond poorly. You know, when you respond poorly to a narcissist, one of the things that we can say is you're probably feeling very weary and they've worn you down and sure enough in your weariness, the less than ideal comes from you. We can also say that uh, maybe you keep hoping against all hope that the narcissist is going to change. And so you're trying to bide your time waiting for that to happen. We can say that uh, you prove to be limited in knowing how to deal with the BS that the narcissist throws at you. And at some point, it's like, I don't know what to do with this inappropriate person. We can say that... Uh, you are a mixed bag. Sure enough, if uh, the narcissist or anyone else hangs out with you for a while, they're going to find out that there are some elements about you that are flawed and imperfect, but it doesn't mean that you are a fundamentally bad person. You see, there's certain uh, key truths that the narcissist doesn't want to entertain, and that is 
you're not defined by all of your non-ideal moments. Keeping in mind the binary thinking, uh, you know, if all or nothing, you're a mixed bag. You have pluses and you have minuses, and uh, let's make sure that we look at all of you rather than just focusing on your moments where you were uh, less than ideal. I'm hoping you can also understand that it's okay to, to be imperfect and to, and to hurt and to express some of your hurt. When you make mistakes, you're also capable of learning, and that's uh, so important. And, and basically, I'm hoping that you can understand that the narcissist is indeed looking toward you to be a foil so that they don't have to deal with their own garbage. And you're not required to take that bait. These individuals who want to push this big lie onto you are poisonous. Uh, your dignity, your sense of well-being, your sense of respect uh, is not negated when you have difficult responses to a narcissist. I operate on the assumption that you can tell more about a person's character, not just by the mistake they make, but by the way they respond in the aftermath of their mistakes. And so as long as you're a human, you are going to have your moments where you respond poorly, and we're not going to buy into that lie where the narcissist says, well, that just proves you're a bad person. No, it, pro it proves one thing, and that is you're someone who's in progress. And I hope that you can continue your progress towards the higher priorities and the good goals that you would have for yourself, and don't let their pronouncements drag you into a ditch where they just want to keep you inside that ditch. Uh, you cannot allow a narcissist big lie about you to become your truth. Now, I hope that as you're able to see these kinds of things, it can make a major difference and you can have some therapeutic adjustments. That's what these videos are all about. And so if you've not uh, hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. And uh, the notification bell that goes with it will keep more coming in your direction. I know that when you've been exposed to things like this, there can be some times when you think, you know, I could use some therapy. We have a sponsor, and I'm so pleased that we're connected with them, the BetterHelp people. There's a link below where you, it will take you to an entire team of licensed professional therapists. So if that's something that you would be able to make good use of, I would strongly encourage you to go through the link and get the help that you would need and deserve. In addition, I have my therapeutic classes, courses, uh, with multiple videos inside each course, and then teaching documents that go with it and guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about how to make good connection skills. This is me about establishing the right kind of boundaries. Free to be about finding yourself despite the controllers. We have my podcast. We have my books and other resources. And so please avail yourself to all of that. Narcissists want you to believe the lie that if you make a mistake, it means that you're just, it's proof positive. You're a bad person. When in fact, all I'm going to say is, well, it proves that you're human. And I'm hoping that in your humanity, you can accept and love yourself and, uh, and continue in that growth tra trajectory. And when you do, it does in fact position you to be a person of peace. I so want you to find your peace.